We offer viewers a free subscription to the Prayer and Worship Guide, which contains the TV Mass prayers, the scripture readings, as well as special seasonal prayers and reflections on the weekday Mass readings. For your free copy, call toll-free 1-855-855-MASS. So that's 1-855-855-6277. Or write to Heart of the Nation, P.O. Box 14428, Milwaukee, Wisconsin 53214. To order online, visit heartofthenation.org. Your privacy is important to us, and we will not share your name or contact information with any other organization. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to Heart of the Nation channel. Just click below. Please remember to send in your gift to help support the Heart of the Nation Sunday Mass. Thank you and may God bless you. everyone. It's a warm welcome to all of you as we gather in prayer on this Trinity Sunday. We gather with the sign of the Trinity and our baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. We celebrate Holy Trinity. It's a theological feast, but more important, it's a practical down-to-earth feast. It's really about the relationship of Father, Son, and Spirit, and it's how we fit into that relationship. God has bestowed on us a great gift of love. We are called to share that with others and to bestow that love and to share God's love. And as we gather in prayer, we ask forgiveness for our faults and our failings. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the gift of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you ask us to follow the directions of your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen.
and let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai, just as the Lord had commanded him, taking along with him two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. For this is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and our sins, and please receive us as your own. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul, as written to the Corinthians. My brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our gospel reading today is taken from the good news recorded for us by John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he not only believed in the name of the only Son of God, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. As a priest, I do a lot of weddings. I should say I witness a lot of weddings, and uh, I always find them exhilarating. They're kind of a lot of fun because you've gotten to know the couple a little bit, and You've at least walked with them partway through their engagement and, you know, getting to know each other and going through some nervousness and planning the ceremony. And, uh, you know, the ceremony is kind of a fun aspect of it because how does the relationship of the spouses, the husband and wife, the newly engaged, how does that include each other and how does that include God? Because it's a special dynamic. And especially when you uh, talk to the couple themselves, there's a there's an enthusiasm and there's a there's a, a fun aspect about it and a seriousness, and it shows love in an exhilarating standpoint, and that is very inspiring. But you know what's even more inspiring, though, is anniversaries. I've celebrated 70th anniversaries and 60th and 50th. Those are the people that put that enthusiastic and those loving relationships into practice. Those are the ones that you kind of bow down to because they have made it work, and they have really tapped into the relationship of God. And that's really how it fits when we talked about Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday is really all about relationship. It's about a relationship that God the Father has with the Son, and Son has with the Father. And then we're all connected with that by the relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit. If you remember all those wonderful readings of the Easter season, if you remember all those, all those ways in which Jesus is connected to the Father and the Father to the Son. And then you realize with Pentecost, the Spirit has been sent out upon all of us. The Spirit has been sent out to all of us because Jesus wanted us connected to the relationship that he has with the Father. Now, so often when you, religion enters our life, it's one of those things that we, we kind of go to and not always connect to. And that's the problem. God doesn't want us gawking at a relationship. God doesn't want us looking at the relationship. But God wants us engaged in the relationship. So as a newly married couple, that's what you try to do. You try to engage them more lovingly into a relationship with Father, Son, and Spirit. And that spirit connection is very, very important. And how does that fit with us? The gospel reading talked about God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. When God created us in the book of Genesis, we read that God created us out of nothing. God created, created us out of God's love. God has so much love stored up that he just reached out to all of us. And that's where we came about. We came about created by God's love. And when we went off on our own and wandered away and did our own thing, God constantly invited us back into relationship. And when we finally sinned, God wanted us back and said, I'm going to send my only son as the epitome of my love for you. So part of, I think, our problem in today's world is that we fail to tap into the love that God has given us. God has loved us so much that when we tap into God's love, we're going to constantly be pulled together. The beauty of love and the beauty of those married relationships that I talked about is that the love that she has for him brings out good things in him. And the love that he has for her brings out good things in her. But it doesn't stop there. It brings out good things in other people, the people that they work with, and oftentimes their children as well. I kind of uh, humorously tell couples whose wedding I have that, um, you know, if I have your wedding, free baptisms for life. You know, it kind of talks about that important aspect of connecting family as well and sharing love. There was a statistic a number of years ago. It's actually from the 1990s. And pre-psychologist Father Andrew Greeley did a survey, he did a study. And he was talking about relationship and faith. 
and he was talking about marriages. And it was in USA Today, I think it was in the 1990s. And r roughly, we're talking about a divorce rate that he was confronting about 50%. And I don't know if it's improved anymore today. But when you are involved in your faith, when husbands and wives pray together, when they're active in reaching out and helping one another, and they pray at home, and their families are involved, the divorce rate goes down to from 50% to 0.08%. 0.08% for those that are involved in that relationship with God and relationship with their church, who pray together, who worship together, and talk about their faith. If that isn't any proof that true love comes from the love of the Trinity for each other and then to us, if that isn't the proof of true love, then I don't know what is. Because if this world is going to be more loving, more caring, more reaching out, they're going to have to be connected to the loving relationship that God has for Father, Son, and Spirit, and that God has for us. You know, there's a lot of hope for the world. A lot of hope for the world. When I witness weddings, I look at that hope. When I celebrate anniversaries, I look at that hope. When I celebrate baptisms, I look at that hope and I see wonderful things. And really what's so wonderful about it is us tapping into the love that God has for us. It's not looking, it's not gawking, but it's connecting with God. And the more we connect with God, the more successful we will be at love and care and concern and peace and justice and honesty. You can go right down the list. So keep working on that. The statistic, 0.08% for those that are involved in their churches and pray together and talk about their faith. We can do that. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident in God's love for us, confident that God brings out the best in us, we present our prayer knowing that God is going to help us. For the church, that we may always work to build unity within the church itself and with all who confess Jesus is Lord and ultimately among all God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, May they look to the mutual love of the Holy Trinity as a model, treating each other with kindness and mercy, and realizing the joy of forgiveness and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers who grow our food, that they may be blessed with good weather and a fruitful harvest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially among our viewers and listeners, may this joyful season bring them comfort and health in the company of their risen Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of all the departed, that they may be with their Savior in paradise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs and prayers of all of our Heart of the Nation parish members, including those joining us from the state of California, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, a refuge and our strength, you have given us in so many ways true love and have asked us to tap and to have come in, uh, tap into the relationship of love that you have with Father, Son, and Spirit. Hear our prayer then, God. Answer them and help us truly to be emissaries of your love. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my friends, brothers and sisters all, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, far good and good of all of his holy church. Amen. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we equally believe of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. And so we be praised by the angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as in one voice they now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, grant that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. You could tell that special relationship that Jesus had with the Father the many times he prayed, especially when things got rough. So at the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And we pray for peace. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you always. And with your spirit. As we wish peace here in the church, we extend that peace to all of you who are watching, and may that peace connect all of us together with the love and the relationship of the Trinity. Share that sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us today, for praying, for being part of this, and for dreaming. If everybody connected more to the Holy Trinity, the world would be an incredibly wonderful place to live. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. offer viewers a free subscription to the Prayer and Worship Guide, which contains the TV Mass prayers, the scripture readings, as well as special seasonal prayers and reflections on the weekday Mass readings. For your free copy, call toll-free 1-855-855-MASS. So that's 1-855-855-6277. Or write to Heart of the Nation, P.O. Box 14428, Milwaukee, Wisconsin 53214. To order online, visit heartofthenation.org. Your privacy is important to us, and we will not share your name or contact information with any other organization. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to Heart of the Nation channel. Just click below. Please remember to send in your gift to help support the Heart of the Nation Sunday Mass. Thank you and may God bless you.